Gen 3, Gen 4, upgrading and what to expect. Should you be upgrading all at once or is the step-by-step -step approach a little bit better? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we are talking about Gen 3, Gen 4 upgrading and what should you be expecting. People have asked me these questions about upgrading and software, specifically with the Adobe Suite. So I'll be talking about the idea behind the experience you will be expecting. I have a 970 Evo. That was the original one I was going to be using with one of the Gen 4 drives. And of course, I have uh, three of these now. I've been using them, the SN850, so I can't complain. It's it's been night and day for me and I'm going to be walking you through this idea of if you're upgrading should you be going all at once all in upgrade both your Windows Drive and your storage drive or what will happen if you use your Windows Drive with a Gen 3 and then what if you use it for a Gen 4 and look at the storage because you can buy good Gen 3 drives for storage like a two terabyte a lot cheaper than you can with a Gen 4. So let's jump into some stats. Now these load times on the Premiere Pro Photoshop Lightroom and Lightroom CC all come on the Samsung 970, which is your Gen 3 drive. It is the blue color here, and the rest are Gen 4 drives. Now, there are some abnormalities, and there's two things that I want to note. This, uh, These are tests done as I was testing a group set, and this was before the new updates to Adobe. And of course, um, I believe 980 Pro does have a new driver out. I've reached out to some people and they've given me similar results. So, um, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Uh, what we have seen is this idea of, in any case, with the exceptions of the uh, outliers here uh, that are going to be adjusted uh, as we move forward with the updates, what we see here is uh, the, the blue uh, representing your Gen 3 is almost three times as much in uh, almost every case with the exception of Lightroom CC where uh, you do see this nine seconds. I did do a quick test uh, with the SN850 uh, one terabyte to see why I wasn't competing with the, the uh, two terabyte. After the last update with Adobe, uh, this is uh, back down to around 10 seconds or so. So we are even on all these softwares. And what we do see is um, the speed difference uh, of load times. If it affects you in a mental state, then yeah, you want to upgrade. If it doesn't affect you, then you're good to go. But for me, it drives me insane to sit there and not have something load up. It just drives me insane. But these are the differences that we see here. And it, it does affect the idea of how well something is optimized because we're seeing the softwares be more optimized for the new products that are coming out. When we're looking at specifically the, the load time for Premiere Pro, and we're looking at this idea of seven seconds, six seconds, six seconds, and then bam, 19 seconds. What are we observing here? We're observing the idea that a Gen 3 drive has a slower speed, of course. And people will look at that, you know, that driving factor of, oh, one is sequential read write is like you know six thousand seven thousand. There's one with seventy five hundred, and then a Gen three is up to thirty five hundred. So they go, well, it should be like half, uh, like half as fast as a Gen four drives. But the reality is, is it comes down to the random files being processed with the software. So you're gonna see more than just the idea of, hey, I have a drive that's twice as fast. We see this especially when we are loading files. Now, this is uh, the idea here on a file that is 24 to 25 gigabytes. I can load it up in about uh, a one plus seconds. When I have something where I'm loading up, you know, 100 to 20, 100 to 125 gigabytes, which is this, is about 125 gigabytes. I'm hitting around six seconds with the uh, Gen 4 drives. With something like the 970 Pro, you'll sit there crying for 35 seconds. Now, you might say, hey, that's not a lot, but in any given day, if I'm doing this three, four times in a day, editing different videos, moving files around, doing all this stuff, it drives you insane waiting when you know something's better. When you don't know something's better, it's fine. Like we know there's going to be new faster drives in the future, um, you know, but we're not there yet. So it doesn't drive you insane yet. So we're seeing this, like the, the idea is that this is your Windows drive right now. And this is the effects that you're going to be getting as a Windows drive. If you're doing it once in a while, then who cares? But if you're doing it on a daily, then the upgrade is definitely worth the money. Multicam sequence. Now, this is an example of one of the, the, the functions that is in Premiere Pro. This would be a multicam sequence. I'm grabbing three camera views. I'm dumping all the information into Adobe, and then I'm 
telling it, hey, let's do a multicam sequence so I can cut through the videos much quicker. What we're seeing here is 25, 29, 30 seconds, all negligible differences. And then we see this big 119 seconds. This is almost two minutes. It is the two minutes of death for me. For if I was doing it once in a while, but if I'm doing this once a day, I'm doing a multicam sequence setup editing once a day. Uh, my editor is doing that too that I'm working with now. And you know, you're sitting there and you're like, oh man, that, like he, that guy's like, he's got so many different people that he works with that you know, and the videos are coming at him. He's, he's doing this like five, you know, he's doing about five of them a day, like scratch your head kind of thing. Imagine having to wait knowing there's something else that you can be doing. Now, for, for me, I look at this and I'm like, well, what about all the other functions that we have? These, this is one of those functions where you see it, and this is a single core, and I'm gonna be showing you an example of this. Um, this is a single core process, and yes, it will. you'll see the difference here, and the idea becomes, well, what about all the other different functions that exist, and how are they affected, and you have to put that into consideration. What do I mean by consideration here? Well, you're, you're seeing this import right now happening. There's 128 gigabytes on the system. I also uh, have a, a few SSDs that I'm sticking with right now, and then the video card. So the CPU is a 5900X. This is a single core process, so it's bringing in all the information. It's throwing it to RAM. It's up to 34 gigabytes. If you have 64, you're still going to see it go over that 30 mark, but if you have a 32 gigabytes, then clearly this is going to go up to about 22 gigabytes, 21, and then you'll see it rotating off. But you're seeing the speeds about 440 four megabytes per second. Now I am importing around 800 gigabytes here. Like a lot of information is coming into here. And what we do see is the system doing its thing. And what we'll notice here, the, the, the window drive is not doing that much. It's literally just doing all the random reads that is required by the software and everything else is happening within the RAM and the disk and of course the GPU. And when do we see the big action happening? Well, this is the multicamp sequence being executed. We're seeing all the different files being processed. We have 70 gigabytes of RAM moving. Now this will get up to 100 gigabytes because this is around 800 gigabytes of data again, the video. We also have uh, the SSD hitting 100% going at 1.1 gigabytes per second. So again, this should be able to go up to a read of 6,000, 500, 6,800 gigabytes per second, but that's sequential. It's not random read and write. So this is all random read and write that we're seeing here at 1.1 gigabytes per second. We're also seeing that the disk two, which is my C drive, and this is the 970 where it's not gonna be doing that much. And to put in a highlight here, we're seeing it at 36.9 gigabytes per second and 537. So it's just doing the software requirements of Adobe. Everything else is happening within the drive, the RAM, and the video card. And of course, the processor going up to about 14 to 15% max on something like a 5900X. So final recommendations and thought processes, 970 EVO and these Gen 4 drives. Uh, let's look at this idea and really think about it in terms of three things. Uh, your workflow, what you have as a system, and of course, your budget. These are the three things you should be looking at when deciding what am I going to do and how am I going to do it. So if you have a budget and your system is good with the Gen 4s, I have three. This is what my system can take. Why not? So I went and bought a two terabyte and two one terabytes. One's like a temp drive. I can dump, dump stuff on there. Off we go. If my budget wasn't there, I would be going with uh, still keeping my 970 Evo as my Windows drive. And I would be purchasing one of these as a two terabyte for the uh, actual storage. However, that would be in the case where I am not using my system each and every day. We're looking at workflow now. If my workflow is, you know, every other day I'm opening up Premiere Pro and making a video, stuff like that, then yeah, 970 EVO would be my go-to for my Windows drive and I would have my storage device be the big drive because uh, I can move stuff and do more things with the transfers. However, if my workflow is what I'm describing of two to 300 gigabytes with multi um, softwares being opened at any one moment, I mean, I'm editing a big video and then I'm rendering it while loading up more stuff, um, then you switch to one of these drives as your Windows drive and then you use this as your storage device. And at that, you would want to go invest some money in a bigger storage device now that the Gen 3s are cheaper. That being said, because of transferring my workflow needed 
And I thought it through and I was like, get all the drives upgrade right now because the budget. And that's how we would look at that. I know there are people out there that are going to watch this kind of like some of my other videos where they're like, oh, you're not using professional software. I don't understand your tests because you're not even using the professional software that the big reviewers use. I'm not making a review here for the big reviewers competition. I'm making this for users who have similar questions, similar problems that I'm faced with. And I just wanted to make an emphasis on this so that they know and they understand what they can expect with the different aspects that I'm seeing here. This is why I've created all this uh, videos and why I'm creating this channel in such a way so you can make better purchasing decisions, better ways to make faster, smarter decisions with your businesses, with your creative content and whatever else you are doing. I want to make this community a mindset shift from, hey, let me look at the big reviewers and what they're saying to let me make an educated decision on what I'm buying so that I can look at it in terms of future value that I'm not going to regret. At that, let's look at one last thing here that you should be thinking about your budget because a lot of people will say, oh, I don't have the budget for that. Oh, you have, uh, you know, I can't believe you just went and spend like, what, a thousand bucks on drives. Okay. They, they were on sale. A. B, how do I work budgets out and what do I think about? When I look at something and I say, hey, this is going to cost me $300. I'm looking at it in terms of $300 for the next three years. An average drive is lasting me for three to five years. But I know that three-year component is there with all the upgrades that are happening and technology moving. So I look at it and I go, hey, three years, that's 100 bucks a year for me. And because of how my business moves, I know I'm going to look at it in terms of I'm making 100 bucks a year that I can put towards this. That's it. I'm not looking at it as I'm spending the $300 now. I'm looking at it as an investment over three years. And I'm looking at it in terms of all the components. When I look at one of these systems I put together, I'm not looking at it as a total of five, dollars $6,000. I'm saying to myself, the video card is going to last me three years max. So that's three years. I paid $800, $1,000, $1,500. Let's split that over three years and say to ourselves, well, what's going to happen if the new cards come out in the fall or next year? And I'm going to say, well, that's one year's worth. I'm going to flip this card now. I'm going to buy another card. That was my cost for the year. So now I can effectively break down all my costs and then I can effectively look at what I'm going to be charging for my services, for my products, so that I can accommodate the costs I need to handle. Because, hey, if I hire another editor, I'm going to have to build another unit. Well, guess what? Another system is going to cost me so much money. I have to make it make money for me. I need to know what that's going to look like on any given year. So I hope this all helps put in perspective how decisions should be made when you're looking at in terms of your business and, of course, in your life. Because if you think about it, everything you do in your life is broken down over years and anything you're buying is over years. So start thinking in this way and I think it's going to help you make better decisions with your purchases. With all that being said, leave a comment below your scenario, your question, if you need help with it. Of course, if you have other experiences with what you are doing with your workflow, your setup, I know other people would love to hear it as much as I would because I'm always interested to see what people are thinking and doing and how it could help me with my setup. And of course, uh, hit a like so it can help the algorithm and subscribe so you can see more of this content as we get moving in the right direction.